Welcome back everybody. Today is a day I've been waiting for for a while. And thanks to Meg's motorcycle journey for pushing me over the edge to go ahead and get this ordered and get it in so I could do this install. The second bracket I made and test fitted is going to cameraman. So hopefully they'll do a video on it too and put it up. Okay. So I ordered all my parts from SirDike.com. There is one in Utah and another Harley Davidson in Pennsylvania. I don't remember the exact city of it. I was gonna originally order from them, but they didn't have the trim up. Then it looks like they stopped putting most of it up. So Sir Dyke, Harley Davidson was the only one that had it at a reasonable price. Some places you is on up there. So I decided to put a video on this because the other video, the guy spent an extra 110 bucks on fuel plate and there's really no need in doing that when you can make a bracket for probably under six, seven bucks. Mine didn't cost me nothing. I had scrap metal laying around and I had scrap screws. Well, they really wasn't scrap, just nothing being used and a little paint. But I ordered everything December 14th of 21. On the 24th, my rubber and the emblem came in. And that came pretty quick. The dash trim itself was coming straight from Harley, so it took them a little bit, and I ended up getting it January 10th. So it will take you probably about a month or so just to get the parts to do this. So if you make a bracket and you use my design and specs you should be able to just throw it right in even if you're off on the holes and I did this whole thing with an angle grinder a cordless drill and a pair of ice grips so anybody can do it with those tools there and you just need a grinding disc and a cutoff wheel on the grinder no big deal it's not that hard if I can do it anybody can do it so I'm going to reposition my camera and we're going to start. Okay, I know I can't be seen in this right now, which is fine. I do have the specs of the bracket, which is this guy right here. It is about five eighths to half an inch wide is all you need and one and three quarters inch in length. And from edge of this one to the ends of the plate and from center or from the edge of this bolt to the center of the plate is about three three eighths of an inch on each side but the holes are one inch from center to center right here so as long as your holes are one inch if you're off on your cuts you got play with this size it's no big deal everything will line up and sit perfect and I'm not going to bore everybody with disassembly of the seat and all that. I will go ahead and show everybody this, though. And right here is your tank mount, which is a Torx bit that you'll have to have. I used an Allen head because I could not find my Torx because... My tools are a wreck right now. This one here, you will not reuse this bolt at all. This this one, can you just shove it in your pocket till you're done. Now, when you do this, you kind of want to do it where you uh, don't scratch nothing. But this does pop right out. Now, this bolt right here when you pull this off, is actually going to be on your plate already. And when you pull this off, mine came apart in two. The other video, the dude actually cut this back rubber piece to pull his wire out. I, mine didn't do that. Mine came apart perfectly fine. Now this here, there's a little metal tab that push pressure up against this guy right here 
sat in there just like that without the bracket. When I made my bracket, I couldn't get my countersink. I couldn't get it deep enough because I wanted the threads on there. So when I tighten this nut down, this doesn't spin. So I had to leave a gap. And once you put the nut on, you don't have to take it off to install this. But it drops right down in there. And as you can see, you got some wiggle room. So the best way I can do this, which I think is probably going to be the best for everybody, is kind of eyeball it where it's in line and just snug it down a little bit where it barely moves. Like so. And make sure this guy's out. Now your tank trim, your new black line trim. I'll go ahead and pull this piece off. You got one side's longer than the other. The long side goes on the inside of the dash trim. Just, I don't think it has to be on this part. I just did it anyways. It don't really, you don't see any of that part anyways. But what you want to do is find your bolt there and just kind of wiggle it down where it sits perfect, like so. And then gently pull it off and set your trim down where you don't drop it because that would suck. Hold her down, snug it down real nice and tight so she don't back off. And this bolt here, you only want it to be about half inch in length because you you do got a little bit of a, a problem with the inside. Not a lot of spacing. Then, when you drop your console back on, line up perfect, at which point you can put your bottom bolt in, tighten it down. Well, I go on hand tighten mine put your nut on and I'm using a 3 16 Allen on this Torx because I can't find my Torx and this is a deep well 11 millimeter deep well socket just because I don't want to scratch nothing I make sure my hands hit instead of a tool. And I just snug that down like that. Screw this one all the way down. Put this a little bit of torque on there. And that shouldn't come loose. Like I said, this is a real simple switch. The uh, black lines and the breakouts apparently use the same gas tank, but for some reason Harley decided to put different trim on there. Now, since I ain't taking this back off, voila, that is it. That is all there is to this upgrade now I will throw this suggestion out because I did notice this the first time when I test fitted these if you got some kind of like my fender has a clear uh, it's really thick like clear tape type stuff probably wouldn't hurt to go from like here down because where your seat sits it sits up against it so if you got clear tape, I'd suggest going from there down. But I don't have any of it. So 
hopefully I don't scratch it up too much before I do get it or I probably won't worry about it at all. I think it's powder coated anyway, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And this little guy's being done away with and the flush mount pop-up gas tank or gas lid in black is what I'm putting over here. All right, as you can see, very simple install. Changes the look completely. I'm glad I'm not gonna be blinded by that chrome anymore. I do have some other upgrades that I'm thinking about. Powder coating my triple trees, maybe changing these bars over to black bars, and maybe even doing my fender struts and gloss uh, powder coat. And changing the intake and exhaust. And then I'll probably end up throwing a cam in it. If I do, when I do all this, I ain't gonna say if, when I get to do all this stuff. Triple trees probably will not be on a video and the handlebars probably will not be on a video. Depends on if my mechanic lets me video the handlebars and triple tree install. I could do it myself, but it, it comes with one of those parts where I don't know if I wanna mess with it. Just in fear of breaking something. I'm not gonna do a video on the pop-up gas tank lid. Uh, I will go ahead and say this though, if you end up do putting one of the pop-up flush mount gas style lids in, when you put it in, you gotta screw it all the way down and see where it sits on the outer ring. Cause if not, you'll have a dip that's contoured a certain way for it to be completely flush. So just keep that in mind. Test fit it before you do it. Eventually you'll see mine changed out probably, probably in the next video, next couple videos. Depends on if it starts warming up down here in Tennessee. It's been in the 40, so I don't like the cold. I ought to head south, but what can I do? Except get my butt up and go. I will have everything in the descriptions on the website and the dimensions of the bracket for y'all. So I guess until the next one, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you later.